Okay, here we go. This video is going to be about the pelvic girdle. This is our second to last video here of our bone unit. Our objective, hopefully by the end of this, we can locate and name the three pelvic bones, and hopefully you can also distinguish between a male and a female pelvis. Uh, we'll see how we do on our little uh, investigation here later on. All right, so let's get going. First bone of the pelvic girdle is something called the ilium. Now, if you look down here, the pelvic girdle, as you can see, it forms kind of this ring. The very back right here, we see the sacrum. We have a purple area, a gray area, and this blue area. Well, this blue area would be the ilium. Okay, ilium, it's this upper portion here of the pelvic girdle, the ilium. Okay, it's the largest component of the pelvic girdle. Um, let's move on. Um, here's another great picture kind of showing it. When you see the word ilium, you maybe have heard of muscles, uh, something called the iliocostalis. That's a muscle coming from your ilium up to your ribs. It kind of helps strengthen your core. Uh, runners might have heard of something called the iliotibial band. It's an injury that I've had to deal with numerous times, uh, sometimes just called the IT band. But it's a band of muscle that's connecting here from the ilium going all the way down to your tibia. So what are some features that we should know about on the ilium? Well, first off, we have the iliac crest. The iliac crest is literally just this top portion. It's this kind of ridge that's right here on the ilium, the iliac crest, okay? I'm kind of highlighting it right there, okay? The next thing you have is something called the greater sciatic notch, the greater sciatic notch, and it can be only seen from this side view. You kind of see the greater sciatic notch right there. Here it is on the other side. It's a notch, you could probably guess what goes through the sciatic notch is the sciatic nerve. Okay, so the sciatic nerve coming through the sciatic notch. Alrighty. The next feature is something called the acetabulum. It literally means vinegar cup. Vinegar, like I don't know, like you dip your bread in the vinegar, I guess. The idea is it's this cup right here. Do you notice that it actually has three colors making it up? The purple, the grayish green, and the brown up here. The top portion is made up by the ilium. This acetabulum, and the pronunciation's here on the tab, uh, if you're British, you'd call it acetabulum, but the acetabulum is uh, the socket for your hip. It's where your femur is going to fit into, okay? All right, and for some reason, it's called the vinegar cup, but it, acetabulum literally means vinegar cup. If you've ever heard of acetic acid, that's vinegar, so it's, there's kind of your word connection. All right, moving on. Next, we're on to the ischium. All right, now the ischium is the inferior portion of the hip bone. Let's get a little picture up. So here on this picture, you can see the blue area of the hip bone. This is a side view. Do you recognize what this little area is right there? Hopefully, it's the greater sciatic notch. Okay, so the inferior portion of the hip bone is the ischium. Right now, you guys are sitting on your ischium. It is the weight-bearing part of your pelvic, uh, your pelvis. Um, and if you've ever had somebody sit on your lap and maybe you felt their little um, butt bones digging into your thigh, what you're feeling, what are their ischiums? So next time somebody's sitting on your lap and it's painful, just lean forward, whisper in their ear, I feel your ischium. And they'll probably hop off immediately. Um, the thing that we're going to look for, it's the ischial tuberosity. So again, you can just whisper in a creepy voice, I can, your ischial tuberosity is digging into my thigh. Um, and it's this round, it's a kind of thicker area right down here at the very bottom of your um, hip, of your pelvic girdle. Um, the next thing is the obturator foramen. Now, you might notice this gigantic hole right here. Its name is the obturator foramen. It is bigger than the foramen magnum. And I know I told you earlier that the foramen magnum is the largest uh, foramen. The difference is the obturator foramen is closed off. Stuff doesn't really go through it. It's not like the foramen magnum where your brainstem goes through it, okay? So the obturator foramen. All right, next bone. It is the pubis, okay? It's the anterior portion, so it should be the front portion of it. So let's see a picture. It's this red area right here. So switch this to red. This area up in front would be the pubis, okay? Features that we'll notice is the pubic symphysis. Now let's get a picture of this. All right, pubic symphysis is this portion right here. I think I've shown it to you before. It is the very center of the uh, pubic area. For women, this is where the mons pubis is kind of like a cushion in front of this. This is the thing that can actually stretch during childbirth. Uh, hormones, mainly relaxin, 
makes this, it's a disc of fiber cartilage. It actually will relax and allow the pelvic girdle to separate during childbirth to make a little extra room right here for the baby head. All right, it also kind of makes it difficult to walk. Uh, fun things to deal with later in life. All right, so let's move on now. After the pubis, uh, we've pretty much covered all three bones. Let's now take a look at the difference between male and female pelvis or pelvises. Pelvis is plural, the same with pelvises. All right, for males, uh, they're going to be larger, heavier, and more prominent features. The reason they're more prominent is because guys have bigger muscles, so you're going to have bigger features. So that iliac crest is going to be very prominent on a guy's pelvic bone. Okay? Uh, the guys are also going to have a narrow sciatic notch, and that is probably the easiest way to tell if you're looking at a boy or a girl pelvis. Okay? Uh, females are going to be wider and shallower, so more room basically inside the pelvic girdle. Uh, that would make sense. You're going to pass a baby through there eventually. And girls are going to have a wider sciatic notch. So let's take a quick look, side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, left and versus right. You can obviously tell which one is the male. Here, let me make my little symbol. There's my male symbol. And here would be our girl symbol. Oh, whoops. There we go. All right. Something else you might notice about this as you look at a front view, women kind of have this nice wide angle here at the front where the pubic symphysis is. Guys, it's a little bit more narrow. Okay, the angle, you could look at it right. This one is more close, a little obtuse. This is a more acute angle. Uh, geometry helping us out. Here we go. All right, uh, this picture here is another great one, and this is really what I want you to focus on. It's that sciatic notch. So take a look at that sciatic notch versus that one. Okay, the males, again, much more narrow. The girls is much more wider. Okay, easiest way to tell the difference right then and there. All right. So hopefully we'll get some practice with this today in, uh, in class when you come into class. And uh, you'll be able to distinguish any of these pelvic bones from each other. Awesome.